All right, it is Friday, May 12th, 2023, about 7.30 in the evening. Getting ready to get out and play a session. We are headed back to our home base. We are going to South Point Hotel and Casino. Going to jump into either the 1-2 game or possibly the 2-3 game, depending on the waiting list. Feeling a little bit spicy tonight, so we might jump into the, the bigger game See if we can't run it up. Um, that's it. Poker Vlog, Episode 3, Friday, May 12th. See you guys at South Point. <laughs> seat at one two no limit texas hold'em we have king queen offsuit in the small blind here get a couple limpers in early position the middle position player decides to bump it up to ten dollars button calls the ten dollars and we decide to call the ten dollars here as well i think this is a mistake i think we should be three betting here we're out of position we don't want to play this hand multi-way out of position, but as played, we do put in the call. The under, uh, under the gun player puts in the call as well, so we are going four ways to a flop here of queen, ten, six. So we do connect with top pair here. It is a rainbow board. We lead with a check, as we would with our entire range, and this ends up checking around on the flop which brings us to a turn card of the deuce of clubs. I think now we can feel pretty confident we have the best hand unless somebody is slow playing a monster here like a set of sixes or a set of tens. We put in a $20 bet. It folds around to the middle position, the original Razor, who thinks about this for some time here before eventually letting his cards go and the button folds pretty quickly as well. So we end up taking down this $63 pot. I think we could have played this a little bit differently and gotten a little bit more value out of it, but as played, we do win this hand. A couple of orbits later, we pick up Queen Jack offsuit in the small blind again, and we have a couple limpers in the pot in early position. Same player as in the previous hand decides to bump this up to $10. He is in the low jack, and it folds around to me. I think over my options here, and I do not want to call this out of position. Uh, I don't want to play this multi-way. Uh, so I decide to bump this up to $35, hopefully to fold out the limpers and to isolate the original razor and go heads up to a flop here. The original player thinks it over for just a, a brief moment and decides he does not want to put in the extra money here and he folds his hand. Okay, we have ace eight of diamonds on the button. We get a bunch of limpers and we unfortunately decide to limp in here as well. This is a mistake. We should be raising this 100% of the time, trying to isolate weaker ranges pre-flop. As played, though, we go six, way, six ways to a board, which comes down seven, four, three with two diamonds. Pretty good flop for our particular hand. We've got two overcards. We've got the nut flush draw. A lot going on for our hand here. So when the cutoff makes it $10 to go here on this flop, we decide to put in the call. 
I think we could be raising here, trying to take this down on the flop, but I think a call is fine as well. We see a turn, which is a nice card for us. It is the ace of hearts, so we do connect with one of our overs. And when the cutoff decides to continue here for $25, I think about my options. I think we still have rate to have the best hand here pretty frequently. I go ahead and put in a call for $25. The other players get out of the way, and we end up going to a river card, which pairs the board. It is the four of clubs. I don't think he's got a ton of fours in his range here. Some of the time he might wake up with trips, but... When he checks to us, I decide pretty quickly to check this back. I think this is mistake number two. We should be betting here on this river for value. We end up winning this $92 pot. As you might know, I'm a big fan of Brad Owen. Watching Brad's vlog really inspired me to start my own poker vlog. And I learned a bunch of stuff about hand analysis and thinking critically about poker by watching Brad's vlog. But Really one of the key things that I picked up was that in order to be taken seriously as a poker vlogger, you've got to get a key shot of the ceiling of the poker room. This accomplishes two things. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're a serious poker vlogger, and it lets the poker gods know that you deserve to have good poker hands going forward. Turns out the ceiling shot works. We wake up with ace-king offsuit in the very next hand. We are in the cutoff and we raise to $12. The button, who's been playing fairly tight, decides to put in a three bet here to $46. Now, I think about my options here. I've been fairly active at the table leading up to this. I've been raising quite frequently, been winning some hands. So he could be doing this a little bit lighter than usual. I have blockers to aces. I have blockers to kings. I don't want to play this hand out of position, so I don't think calling is the good play. Folding is certainly out of the question, so that only leaves us with one option, and that is to go ahead and four bet this hand. So I settle on a sizing of an additional $146 with the intention here to go all in if the opponent rips. So we will be calling off our stack. Fortunately, though, he folds very quickly, and we move on to the next hand. We've got King-9 offsuit on the button. I think this is a good enough hand to raise with when it folds to us. I make it $12 to go, and both the big blind and the small blind decide to defend and call this $12 bet. When they make the call here, I expect them to have some Broadway holdings, some suited connectors, and some pocket pairs seven through deuces in their range. So when this flop comes down seven, five, four, rainbow, I expect that some of their pocket pairs will have connected with this, although it does miss a large portion of their Broadway and suited connector type holdings. So I probably should be stabbing here, but as played, I check. We see the king of clubs on the turn. And the small blind now decides to make it $20 on this turn. I think we have to call here. We turn top pair. We have a fairly decent, although somewhat weak, kicker. I think we can be good here often. I go ahead and make the call, and we go to the eight of clubs here on the river. The big blind now decides to put in a $30 wager. Getting about three and a half to one on a call here. I don't think we need to be right too often in order for this to be a profitable call. So I go ahead and stick in the $30, and unfortunately we get shown ace-king offsuit. Queen-10 offsuit, early position. We decide to limp in here. Big mistake. Middle position player limps. Late position players limp. Big blinds check their option. Small blind limps. Dealer does a little dance with the cards, and we go to a flop six ways, king, queen, jack on the flop. So we flop middle pair with an open-ended straight draw here. Checks around on the flop, and we see a pretty good turn card of the queen of hearts. So now we have trips to go along with our open-ended straight draw. We decide this is a turn card where we want to start building the pot, so we put in a $10 bet here on this turn. 
the middle position player decides to call the $10, and we go heads up to a river, which is the nine of clubs, giving us our straight. I decide to check here, and the middle position player thinks for a bit before deciding to put in a wager of $15. I think I should be betting on this river 100% of the time, really trying to get value from my hand. But as played, I think I should be raising here on this river. And unfortunately, I decide to just put in the call, which I think is a mistake. I think we could be getting value from worse two pair holdings, potentially worse queens. As played, the player turns over ace high and we end up winning this $62 pot. All right, second to last hand of the night, we have Jack-10 suited in the big blind. We get a couple of callers here. The $5 button straddle is on. The small blind decides to complete. I go ahead and complete. The big blind goes ahead and checks his options. So we go four ways to a flop of Jack, Jack-9. The small blind thinks over his decision for a bit. He uh, doesn't act right away. I'm not sure if he knows it's on him. Eventually, he does check. We go ahead and check, and it ends up checking around here, and we go to the four of clubs on the turn. Now the small blind decides to put in a wager here of $15. We're not going anywhere with our trips. I think we could be raising here, but I wanted to keep ranges wide and let him keep bluffing. And we go to a deuce of clubs here on the river. We are now heads up. Everyone else gets out of the way. He puts in a bet of $15. I put in the $15 call. I think we could be raising here. I think we're playing way too scared. He shows ace four off suit. We turn over our trips and we take down this $83 pot. Last hand of the night, we have King Jack of Diamonds in Under the Gun. We raise it up to $11 here, and we get one caller. The button decides to come along. This guy has been uh, drinking quite a bit. He's having uh, quite a fun night, and um, you know I'm excited to get into a pot with him here. Things get a little weird, though, in this hand, so I'm curious to hear other people's feedback on what the proper etiquette is here. Leave the comments below. We see a flop of five king queen here. Five king queen. So we have top pair with a pretty decent kicker. We decide to check it over to him, see if he wants to put in a wager here, get a little gambly. He does not. And we see the five of spades come off on the turn. So trips are now out there. He certainly could have some fives in his range, but I think he could also have a fair X of weak kings or potentially a queen in his range as well. So we threw out a bet of $15. He makes the call, and we see the four of hearts on the river. Fairly safe river card here. Uh, I decide to go ahead and put in a bet here of $15 again. He calls pretty quickly. We show King Jack. He mucks his cards here, but then says, wait, 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 I think we chop. So I go ahead and turn over the card that he mucked, and it was a king, and we do indeed chop this. Curious to hear other people's opinion on this particular situation. When the button mucks his hand like that and his cards face down, I feel like there's an argument that could be made that his hand is dead. Um, not sure if I should have turned his card over or after I should have waited for the dealer to turn his hand over or for the dealer to potentially call the floor and the floor could make a ruling. Ultimately, I think you all saw I turned his card over and revealed that it was a king. So we do end up chopping this pot. We both have kings and fives with a queen kicker. I think that's probably the appropriate thing to do is turn the cards over. If it's a chop, go ahead and chop the pot and then move on. It's an interesting situation, though, when a player mucks like that and you end up in this spot. <laughs> That's it for this episode. We got into the game for $300. We cashed out for $410. So a little bit of a profit, $110. I'll put the total up right here somewhere. Um, if you like the video, please do give me uh, a like, subscribe, hit the notification. 
and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, see you soon. Mm -hmm.